Hello everybody. This is my seventh lecture of a series of lectures on transistor design and applications. And the subject of today is going to be bootstrapping for an input resistance of an amplifier stage and at the same time bootstrapping also to increase the gain of an amplifier. Okay, let's start. You see this circuit in here? This is an emitter follower. And we want to calculate the input resistance for this amplifier stage. You see the three branches. This is the input. Now you have three branches in parallel this 20k and this 20k and also the third branch which includes the little r in here or the emitter resistance the, the dynamic emitter resistance in series with the 1k emitter resistor okay so those are the three branches and what is r in in a case like this it be equal to 20k in parallel with another 20k Okay, in parallel with HFE multiplied by the 1K. This is the way looking into the base of the transistor, where you have to multiply whatever resistance that you got in there by the HFE. And by the way, the little RE is not included in the equation. You can add it if you want to. But probably it's just 10 or 15 ohms or whatever. It won't make much of a difference when it's compared to the 1K. So what does that mean? That means that two resistors in here will equal about 10k in parallel okay and both are in parallel with a 100 kilo ohm which is about that's if we consider hfe or beta to be 100 so 100 multiplied the 1k you got your 100k in there and finally the three branches that you got in there give you an input resistance of around 9k and as you see those 220Ks in here are killing the input resistance of the whole stage. Okay, because the 9K are mostly affected by those two. Okay, so what to do about that? We need to do something about it. And the idea in here to make a bootstrapping configuration, okay, to increase that input resistance. Let's see how this is done. Okay, bootstrapping technique to increase Rn or the input impedance. And what's the idea of bootstrapping, by the way, for people who don't know what that means? It's the idea that somebody can lift himself up from the ground by just pulling the straps of his boot, which is impossible, of course, but this is the idea that somebody can pull himself or lift himself from the ground by just pulling the stripes of his boot, okay? And this is the boot that we have in here, this circuit. Okay, so how this is done? The same configuration of the previous circuit, but we just added a cap and a resistor. And by the way, in many cases, without even the bootstrapping technology, you can just eliminate that cap in there. They just throw a resistor in there and they increase its value. So sometimes they just put something like about 47 in here, 47K or 100K and another 100K. And they put in here just something like 47K. Or even if they kept it high in here, they just throw instead of the 4.7, 47K. Okay, so that gives you a high resistance already. You increase your resistance by the same configuration. And don't forget that IB, okay, will go through that R3, and after that go through R1. So R1 will pass the current from R2, and will pass the current of IB all the time. 
So that's why you have to be careful when you select these resistors to make sure that you have stiff network and to make sure that your IB will not truly affect the VB. Okay, now let's see how that bootstrapping is done. The idea in here that whatever voltage is present at the emitter resistor will be present at the input. Okay, this is the idea. And that happens through the coupling of this cap. Okay, let's suppose we have 100 millivolts in here as a peak, as an AC signal of 100 millivolts peak. And this is a follower. Of course, you're going to have your 100 millivolts in here at VE. And since this is coupled, you're going to push that cab. Just remember that that cab is always like a little battery. You have to think of it as a little battery. So pushing 100 millivolts, okay, at the negative side of this cab will create another 100 millivolts in here, okay? And what happens in this case? Whatever change in here is happening here. You have 100 millivolts in here, and you have an additional 100 millivolts in here. And no current will flow through R3 across the 4.7K. No current. And the idea in this case, since no current is passing here, okay, that means this, this R3 is open. It can be considered as open. Because the same voltage in here is in here, and no current is flowing. So that means it's like this, this, this path is open. And this is the idea of bootstrapping. And what happens in a case like this? What kind of Zn we expect? The total Zn is going to be the following. It's going to be HFE, okay, beta of that transistors, and add all the resistors that are considered in series or in parallel. And what do we see in here? We see the little Re, okay, we see it in here. And we got this branch of Re, Okay, which is the 1K. And those two are in parallel with R2 and R1. Okay, looking this way, you're going to forget this one because we said it's open. You got the R, R2 in parallel with R1, between here. And both are in parallel with RE, little RE plus RE. And what does that give us? What kind of... Let me see if it's calculated. No, it's not calculated but can be easily calculated when you know some of the currents and some of the dynamic resistance of RE. And even if you ignored RE, you still, it's still visible in front of you that this is 1K, and this is 1K in here, and those two are, this is 1K multiplied RK in parallel with 1, 2, 3, okay? So that means what do we have in here? Okay, 1K, 10K, and another 10K, those will give you 5, and you get this about 1K, so you get about 4K, for, sorry, about 900 ohms. You get about 900 ohms when you put them all together. Multiplied by 100, it's much higher than before, okay? That gives you a much higher impedance than before. So Zn in here it's saying it's equal infinity at frequency of interest. Actually, it will not be infinity, but this is a little bit exaggeration. So the idea, probably looking looking at this resistor, that's what I mean probably by Zn, is looking through R3. R3 will be open. That's the idea. So that's why I'm calling it an infinity. But the idea that you will always have this resistor multiplied by HFE, which equals around 100K, okay, 100K. And uh, added to that, also, this resistor and that resistor, and they are in, when they are in parallel, and they are equal around 5K, okay. So, what else do we have in here? Yeah, and how to calculate that frequency of interest to know the value of that cap, okay? You have to look at that cap from the resistance point of view of R1 in parallel with R2, because this one is already much, much high when it's multiplied by HFE. So you care really much about R1 being in parallel with R2. And in this case, it's around 5K. So you get to you select your two at the frequency of interest, 
you know, if it's an amplifier, probably you are interested if something like 20 hertz, that's the starting point. So you put your 20 hertz in there and you calculate it. And that's why, as a matter of fact, I mean, look at that cab. The size of that cab is a little bit big, okay, to suit the situation and to create that bootstrap strategy. And let's see now how we can boost our gain to using that bootstrapping technology. And it's the same idea that you always, whatever your voltage that you put across any resistor from both sides, Vx and Vy, for in this case, for an example, okay, if no current flows through R2, it's considered like an open resistor. And this is the idea that is practiced in here. What do we see in here? We see our VCC and our ground. We see the voltage gain device or Q1. That's the creator of the voltage generation. Okay. That, that, that will provide the voltage gain. It's Q1. It has an emitter resistor, R5, plus the dynamic resistor inside RE. We got our three diodes in here to bias. We talked a lot about that and about the thermal runaways and stuff like that. And those three diodes are to bias VBE of Q2 and Q3. And whatever is left is for R3 and R4. Okay. And those resistors will help in preventing that thermal runaway. And you always you will have your feedback in a case like this because you're going to have a, a very high gain. So you need your feedback. Without your feedback, circuits like these do not function. So get your feedback back to the input. Okay. You got your bootstrapping cap, which is between the output and between the two resistors in here, that they are equal in most cases. And okay, let's consider first that we are not using the cap. So what's the gain in a case like this would be? If you still remember from earlier from early lectures, oh, you have RC divided by little re plus r re or r5 in a case like this. So this is the gain. Let me see. Gain q1 if cap is not used. Gain q1 would be equal to r1 plus r2 divided by r5. We are not including little re in here. You can include if you want to, but probably because it's about 10 ohms or 20 ohms or whatever, it's not included. But anyway, if you want more accuracy, you can add that little e to it, which finally will equal to RC over RE. When we, what, we, what we mean by RC is both of R1 and R2. Okay, this is the gain when a cab is not used or when bootstrapping technique is not used. Okay. Now the gain, sorry. Okay, now the gain of Q1 of a cab is used. Okay, let me let me first discuss the mechanism of bootstrapping, and after that we'll go after that and see how how this is done. Okay, the idea of bootstrapping is similar to that bootstrapping that we've done at the input. Is to have a resistor, okay, with the same voltage apply across the same resistor, and no current passes. And this is what's happening in our case in here. Okay. The voltage in here will be present at the output. Vy present at the output. And through the coupling will be present as Vx. So let's say we have an additional one volt of AC voltage in here. That one volt will be present in here. Okay. And that volt will pass to Vx in here. So that means delta Vx over delta Y it would be the same, no change, okay, because both they got their one volt AC, and that means they have the same voltage, okay, but no current is passing through them. So that means this resistor can be considered as open and in infinity in resistance. So this is the mechanism. It's exactly like the mechanism that we applied at the input, at the input impedance over there. And probably if you want to put voltages in here, just from the discussion point of view, let's say we have something like a 20 volts VCC in here, uh, or let's consider it to be a VCC plus 10 volts for an example. And we have a minus VEE of another minus 10 volts in here. And this is at the ground, okay. 
So whenever you apply a voltage in here, you get your transistor amplifying a signal, and you got something like one volts up in here. So this will be about, let's say, about 1.5 volts or 1.6 volts. You got your 0.6 across VPE, and you're left with one volt in here. And that whole volt will be coupled exactly to the same point in here. And we said this is around 10 volts. So this, this was in the middle. This was in the middle of it. In the middle of it, let me see how much you're going to be. Okay. But it will be around 5 volts. Around this point will be around 5 volts. Because you got 5 in here and you got 5 in here. Okay, those are the 10. And you have your minus 10 in here. So whatever. Any additional of one volt in here would be present in here, like we said, since the change in both those voltages, but no current passes through R2, so that means this resistance can be considered as an infinity, and therefore an infinite resistance of RC over a common emitter transistor, that means an infinite gain. So Again, for Q1, if T cap is used, IR2 at frequency of interest, the same thing. We are talking about frequency of interest. And you have to include that cap. Those two resistors are be considered, will be considered in parallel. Okay, when you calculate that cap, and you're going to have to add the output resistor to it, whatever it is. So you got those two are in parallel, and this one will be in series. This is how you calculate your cab in here to make sure that you are calculating it right. Okay, so RCQ1. Okay, how does that, this transistor, what does it see? It sees an infinite resistance according to that booty strapping and which equals infinity. And when you have your RC of Q1 infinity, that means you have an infinite gain or IE a very high gain. Okay, so this is the idea of boot strapping. For, for the voltage gain, and that was the idea of bootstrapping for an input resistance. And in our next lecture, I believe you are going to have a lot of goodies. We're going to start dealing with a differential amplifiers most likely most op amps will always have a differential amplifiers that's going to be in lecture eight but i believe this is a good point to stop right here and i would like to ask you all to subscribe please because a little encouragement is 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 good okay 90 percent of the audience or the viewers are not subscribed so please subscribe and provide some encouragement and thank you for watching and you all have a good time and see you next lecture bye for now